think a lot of people don't prepare for an emergency because one, they don't know where to start. Two, they don't think they can afford to. And three, they don't think anything bad is ever going to happen to them. It is really, really critical that everybody does prepare the best way that they can for an emergency. As I'm filming this right now, we are recovering from two very major hurricanes that are like hurricanes we've never seen before. Natural disasters are going to continue to get worse and more extreme. Whenever I say that, there's always people in the comments that don't like that, but that's the reality. That is actually what is happening. Natural disasters are going to continue to get worse and more frequent. If you don't want to believe that, then that's fine. There's also the economy that we're dealing with. You could go through a financial disaster, a health disaster. There's multiple reasons why you should prepare yourself for times to not stay the same, to be worse than they are now. It is not a negative thing to prepare. It is a positive thing because you are making sure that you have everything that you need so that you don't end up in a negative situation. We live in a world now where we are so used to modern conveniences that we don't even know what we need to survive. We just live in this very easy world of being able to turn on a faucet and having fresh, clean running water, having electricity, being able to have all of these amenities, not being worried about being cold or, you know, having to go out and find your food when there's, there's not a scarcity issue, which is wonderful, but there are multiple ways that all of that could just be gone in an instant. And most people would not be able to make it on their own. And those modern conveniences are great. They are very efficient. They make our lives better and easier. But not knowing how to survive if those were to go away is really putting yourself in a very dangerous situation. And everybody should know how to meet their most basic needs without modern amenities. My family and I have been living off grid for the better part of the last year. And I have learned so much about meeting those basic needs. I want to give you guys just some things that you can do in order to better prepare yourself. Even if you don't have a lot of money to spend, there are skills that you can learn. There are free things that you can do. There are very affordable things that you can buy that will really prepare you for whatever comes your way. One of the things that we can learn from Pauline hitting the mountains is that help might not be coming to you as quickly as you need it. We do have programs in place in our country to help people when disasters hit. But if the disaster is big enough or rural enough, there might not be enough people and resources and training to be able to help everybody all at one time. Also, if you prepare yourself and you have the things that you need, you free up resources for people to be able to help other people who maybe, you know, are older, younger, have health issues. If you're an able bodied person, who really could take care of themselves in an emergency situation, you should be prepared as much as possible so you're not relying on anybody else to come and save you and you can help other people and help yourself. As I'm filming this, I live in the Appalachian Mountains. I am seeing the devastation around me. We were very fortunate that our property is fine and really our town was able to recover after you know just a few days. But, you know, that was really devastating to know that something like that could happen where you least expect it. Also, as I'm filming this, my parents are down in Florida. Hurricane Milton hit them last night and they are currently without power. They are fine. They had some minor damage to their house, but things happen and we have got to be prepared. I'm going to go through a list of everything that you can do to prepare yourself today. Anything that I talk about in this video, I will link in the description box down below. So the first thing you need to know is know your location. Know what 
risk you have in your location, like flooding, hurricanes, tornadoes, weather related issues. Are you close to any government buildings that could, you know, be targeted? Do you live rurally or do you live in an urban environment? Like what things could happen based on the location that you are currently living? Think about a wider picture as in like your community, but then also think about a smaller picture on like your actual property, your actual house. Is it in a flood zone? Think about your area as far as community preparedness. If you live in a very rural area with lots of trees and the power goes out, there's a big storm, trees go down, it's probably going to take a really long time for your utilities to get back up. Whereas in Florida, even if there is a massive, huge hurricane that hits, they have the manpower and the resources to be able to get power back on very, very quickly considering the situation. Infrastructure in your area is also important. Florida's homes and buildings are built for hurricanes, high winds, while the homes in the mountains of Tennessee were not built for those high winds. In Florida, grocery stores and businesses have generators because they expect for the power to go out during hurricanes, while in small mountain towns, these grocery stores don't have generators. Our local grocery store was out of power for about four days. They were running on a cash-only system. All of their cold stuff was had to be thrown away. And, you know, even though we didn't get hit super bad, like the power going out just stops everything in town. Like there were no banks. Like nothing was running for four days. Next thing you can do that is also free is to have an evacuation plan. During Hurricane Helene, we evacuated our property because of the high winds. We're currently living off grid in a camper, so it was not safe for us to stay on our property. Make sure that you have a plan for evacuation if you need to. Have friends or family or a campground far away. Have bags ready to be packed. If you have animals that need crates, have a plan for them. Have crates ready, have food ready, and go step by step by step as the situation arises and plan accordingly. You want to reduce your barriers as much as possible so that leaving can be quick and easy. Next is that you have got to make sure that you can get fresh water. There's a lot of options for getting water. We have been living off grid. We don't have running the water. We haven't for over a year. And making sure that you have clean drinking water and then water to do other things like cleaning yourself, cleaning your dishes, your laundry, and all of those things is really important. And people do not realize how much they use water and how much water they use and how heavy water is, how powerful water is. If you were in a situation where you are thinking that water might not be available, there's a hurricane coming, some whatever natural disaster there is, an ice storm, the pipes might freeze, fill up every single thing in your house that you can with water from your faucet. Clean your bathtub, fill up your bathtub, fill up your sink, fill up all of the glasses in your house, every jug you have, go ahead and fill it up with water. Up in North Carolina, their entire sewage system, their water system has been completely destroyed. They are not going to have fresh water for a very long time. Even the water coming out of springs and creeks is polluted because it just is just this disgusting mess of yuck. Um, so unless you're really high up on a mountain and there's a fresh spring up high, then even those streams and creeks are not safe to drink. So it would be a really good idea to have some sort of water filtration system so that you can clean just about any water and make it safe and ready to drink. A really cheap option is to just have a life straw. They are like between $17 and $20 on Amazon. I will link that down below just in case of an emergency. If you have a whole family, something more like a Berkey, which is something that we have, would filter out a lot more water than just a little bit. You can also get a Sawyer, which is a filtration system that you can just put on a smart water bottle. 
And that is something that we take with us when we go hiking. There are also tabs that you can put in your water and there's a safe way to use bleach the clean water. Although I don't really like that idea. I would rather have a filtration system than adding chemicals to my water, but it's still good to have that option. It's better than drinking bacteria. If you do not do anything else, make sure that you have a way to access fresh, clean drinking water. Make a plan and make multiple backup plans because you can live for many days without food and other things, but water is so important. Along with water also comes things like self-care. Like how are you going to bathe and shower? How are you going to go to the bathroom? Knowing how to create a quick and easy composting toilet system is going to be helpful. I did a whole video on how we live without running water that I will link at the end of this video and also down below. So you can go and watch that next. Water is just so, so important and there's a whole lot of information when it comes to water. Also be very aware that if you have a well, your well pump runs off of electricity. And if you don't have electricity, then you don't have access to your well water. This is something that I have seen a lot of people talk about uh, who have survived Helene and are currently without power is even though they had a well, they had a huge issue getting water from their well even with generators, it's really hard to hook up and figure out that whole system. So make sure that you are not relying on just your well water, because if your electricity is out, you really don't have super easy access to that water. While we're talking about that, a lot of people have generators and generators require fuel. And, you know, fuel is something that people have a hard time getting. You can store quite a bit of fuel. Um, but then like trying to get more is hard and fuel only last for so long. There's also been a lot of people talk about how they had never used or tested out their generator before, and it didn't really work quite the way that they expected it to. You can't just like plug up your house to your generator and you can't run it all the time. So, you know, just make sure that you practice the things that you have. I don't really realize exactly how much electricity they use on a daily basis. That is another thing that we have learned living off grid is how much wattage like certain appliances take and certain things use. That would be something really helpful to learn is what you can actually run off of your generator. Next thing is food. You should have some food stored up. My goal is to have about three months of food stored up, but you know, we're unlimited space. So the more room you have, the more food you can store up. Start small, just, you know, get a few extra things every week when you go to the grocery store. The food that you get is really important. And I did a whole video recently about mistakes that I see people make when they are stocking up on food for an emergency. I'm not going to go over all of that in this video, but I will also link that video. And I really, really recommend that you go and watch that also because you don't want to stock up on the wrong foods. Quick rundown is don't forget when the power goes out, you do not have a refrigerator and freezer. Even if you have a generator that will run those things, it won't run those things forever for an extended power outage. That is going to be an issue. Make sure that you are buying things that you will actually eat just in case there's not an emergency. You can rotate those foods out and they're not going to waste. That's going to save you a lot of money. Make sure that they're pretty easy to prepare or you at least have a lot of foods that are easy to prepare because in an emergency, you know, you're stressed out and you're not going to want to spend a ton of time cooking, uh, you know, like big meals. You're going to want pretty simple convenience foods. You also need to be aware of how you're going to be cooking those foods. Cooking food also takes fuel to heat things up. Are you going to be using propane or a charcoal grill or over the fire? Like there's multiple different things that you can do, but practice, know how you're going to heat up your food. I'm going to be doing an off-grid cooking video very soon. So you can be kind of watching for that video. Make sure that you are subscribed and hit the notification bell if you want to see that video coming up. Cooking off-grid is definitely different than just 
cooking in your regular kitchen. If you plan to cook outside over a fire, that is not easy. It is not easy to build a fire. It is not easy to cook over a fire. You need to practice. Go camping, have a bonfire outside, but practice cooking over a fire because it is definitely a skill that you need to learn. Having a little solar battery pack that is rechargeable is very, very convenient. That is the only form of electricity that we have right now on our off-grid homestead. It is only a thousand watt battery pack, but it is enough to run, you know, basic appliances for a little while. It'll run a TV, a DVD player. It will charge all of our phones, all of our lighting, our headlamps, our laptops, like everything that we need. That is plenty um, for us to use for probably about three days without another charge. We also have just like basic solar lights where we can just put it outside and it'll charge. We have a solar fan for when it's hot, we can put that outside and it'll charge itself. There are a lot of solar products that are available right now that are really not very expensive that would be useful. We don't have anything that requires batteries. Everything that we have right now can be either charged via the sun or by our battery pack. You need to think about how you are going to stay warm if it is a cold environment. We have a Mr. Buddy space heater that runs off of propane. We have two pretty big propane tanks that we always keep at least one completely full and change them out. We also have a diesel heater, which we have not used yet, but we do have that as a secondary source of heat. And then if you can get you know, like a wood burning stove or something like that. We don't have that. I don't feel comfortable putting that in our camper. But when we build our house, we will put in a wood burning stove for sure. Make sure that you keep your vehicles gassed up and any other type of fuel that you need. Make sure that you always have extra if you are going to be relying on that for survival purposes in a disaster. And then just make sure that you are stocked up on medicines, especially if you know, you have young kids or older family members that might spike a fever and that fever could be really dangerous. Make sure you keep fever reducers, at least a basic first aid kit, allergy medication, just any basic medication that you might need. Just go ahead and keep that and don't let yourself run out. It's also really good to learn herbal remedies and all about plants, which is something I'm currently learning. Uh, but I will be doing more videos on that in the future as I learn more about those things. Be prepared to not have access to the internet, Google Maps, or any sort of communication with other people. Just have a plan for that. Have a paper map available to you. Learn how to read a paper map if you've never done that before. Practice not using Google Maps when you're driving around and not having the internet. Make sure you have some basic books or some basic skills and just know that you might not have those things. Always have at least some cash because when the power goes out, so do the banks, the ATMs, the credit card machines at the stores, you cannot use your card. You're going to have to use cash. So always make sure that you have some cash available. And then thinking long-term, this is one reason why it is so important to budget, to live below your means, to save money whenever you can, get your expenses low so that you can save money because you just really never know what is gonna happen. You know, these people in North Carolina have not only lost their homes, but their jobs, their income, and having that safety net is so important. So I am putting the videos that I talked about around my face here. So you can go and check those videos out next, whichever one you feel like is most important to you at the time, which one you need to work on. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you next.